And then what happened? Why why did you not do what you were supposed to do? When I got out um, in 16, I got a job. I was staying with my mother. And I had my twins on the way. They came in 17. In 17, I had two more kids on the way. They came in 18. When the two kids were born, we had got put out of our house. And it was just juggling with two jobs. I was juggling with two jobs. We sleeping in cars and motels and really trying to make sure the safety of the kids was first, even though I should have still picked up the phone and text. But I, I think I learned my lesson and I know better now. We are about to watch the parole revocation hearing of a man who absconded from his parole for something like nine years. He's been locked up for a little over 90 days and now has to find out if he's going to have to go back to prison or go home. With that, let's... Yes, ma'am. So I'm going to read the allegations against you. You'll enter a plea of guilty or not guilty, and then we're going to talk about it. So you're accused of violating condition number two. And it states that you failed to report as directed and you have absconded from supervision. How do you plead to that violation? I can ask the same question I asked the parole man. Wait, is, you, you got to plead and okay. then we'll talk about it. You can ask the questions later. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And then number three, you changed your address without permission and absconded from supervision. Yes, you plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Okay, what is your question? Um... When he said um, I changed the addresses without, we had got put out of our house. And um, we were standing like in cars and motels and stuff like that. And um, we didn't have an address. It was like- Did you parole officer what your situation was? Um, no, I didn't. Okay. Now, now you know you should have. Yes, ma'am. I know I know. I know. Yes, ma'am. So, so you, you got out on good time September of 2016. Yes, ma'am. And then what happened? Why why did you not do what you were supposed to do? When I got out um, in 16, I got a job. I was staying with my mother. And I had my twins on the way. They came in 17. In 17, I had two more kids on the way. They came in 18. When the two kids were born, we had got put out of our house. And it was just juggling with two jobs. I was juggling with two jobs. We sleeping in cars and motels. And really trying to make sure the safety of the kids was first even though I should have still picked up the phone and text, but I, I think I learned my lesson and I know better now. That is nothing, it was nothing but a text away. And I really apologize for that. So how many children do you have now? I have eight kids. And, and how old are they? Um, my oldest is 16. My twins are six, they make seven next month on the 21st. My next two girls are five. My next two boys are four and Giovanni is three. So is that all by the same mother? Um, no, ma'am. Um, five is with one and two is with one. And my oldest is when I first came to jail. So the two five-year-olds, those are different? Yes, ma'am. And the two four-year-olds have different moms? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma How many do you so, so you're married now? Yes, ma'am. Well, engaged. 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 And how many have with her? We have five. Uh, the, the, the twins, yes, ma'am. Twins, um, Kimmy, Gio, and King. Three girls and two boys. Okay. And that's my household right there. That's the household. So you don't have any uh, what are, what about the other children? Um, what do you mean? You support them? Yes, ma'am. I made them I made them put me on child support for in case anything goes wrong. So, like, you know, when I'm, whenever I'm having problems, to, they automatically take it out of my check, you know? Whenever I'm working, they automatically take it out of my check, so we won't have no kind of discretion or anything. And if you got automatically got your money coming every month, and I'm able to take care of the household better like that, you know? By their money already going to them, it's easier for me to take care of the household. And when they do call, if I have extra money, I can't give to them. But sometimes it'd be hard, but I get, you got to set up to where uh, I make sure that they have something coming every month. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty smart having it taken out of your check. What is the uh, what was your job? Um, before I came in here, I was working for Waste Connection, um, the trash company. I was uh, doing recycle bin, recycle, and every now and then I'll do trash. Whenever the recycle was off, I'd get on trash just to keep money flowing. Because with, with that, I'll make at least a thousand dollars a week as long as I go to work six days a week. But every day, you don't get a truck. It's right. like you're out there, you're scrambling for a truck every day, and you don't get a truck every day. So on a good week, I get a thousand dollars a week, but on a bad week, I might get a truck every like three days, four days, between seven hundred and fifty to five hundred dollars. So you work six days a week. Yeah, I try to work six days a week. Yeah. 
And you're on, uh, have you ever been, uh, had any other violations since you've been on parole? No, ma'am. I haven't been in trouble in seven years. No trouble. Well, I'm disappointed that, you, you know, I, I see that. I see that you haven't been in trouble for seven years and you really absconded for seven years. Why were you, why were you, um, I know we had a warrant for you, but tell us why you were stopped. How were you arrested? Um, I was going to get my wife something to eat from the huddle house and they pulled me over. But I, I, I really look at things happening for a reason because I want to say Thanksgiving, it got kind of rough after Thanksgiving. I found my grandmother in the house dead, I mean, deceased. And like my mind wasn't there. And I feel like God put me here to put my mind back in track, you know? But rather than was waiting, uh, was waiting a barrier and stuff like that. And it just kept prolonging and prolonging and prolonging. And then this happened. And I missed the funeral and just things come at you for you to realize that I need to be there instead of here. You know what I'm saying? Because anything could happen. Because my mind, I'm not going to lie to you, my mind was drifting. I was like, I see them looking at the wall and I, my mom would be like, what's wrong? I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know. And, I, and it really took me to sit here and realize that there's a bigger picture out there than in here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do. So it was a traffic stop that got you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Mm. How long right. have you been? Um, it's since December 14th. So 90 days? Yes, ma'am. Something like that. A little over 90 days. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to see? you have any questions? Anything you want to say to us before we uh, before we go? Um, and I promise you that you won't have to worry about me absconding or anything like that again. It was just before COVID nineteen. It was like I was juggling with so much. To when when COVID nineteen hit, it's like the world stopped, and it was like confusing. It was like I'm trying to deal with so much at one time, and but now I have my own place with my family. I don't have, I'm not living in a motel no more. I don't have no reason not to reach out to my parole officer. I don't have no reason to upscound them. You know, I have my address now permanently because we own it. Well, my, my wife, I brought it for my for my kids and my wife, put their name on it. So we have a place that's permanent that I don't have to worry about. I, I'm, I'm moving here, I'm moving there, and I don't have to hop around house to house. I have my address, and I promise you that you won't have to worry about me upscounding ever again. This is, this is, this is not, this is not me. You still, you think you'd be able to go back to work? Yes, yes, ma'am. I mean, I also have a job officer also for um, offshore. They say I would be making like at least four to six thousand dollars a month. I got that job offer two weeks when I came in here. A family friend. And he said he's just waiting on me. He said, as long as I don't smoke, and I don't smoke. So he said, as long as I don't smoke, I have the job, and I don't smoke. You don't do drugs? Ma'am? Drugs? No, I don't do drugs. No, I, smoke, I smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, anything you want to say real quick to wrap it up for us before we vote? Um, if you please, if, if if it was possible that I can go, I, I, I can show you that I can do right and that you okay. wouldn't have to worry about me no more. Okay, uh, Jamal. Uh, I'm going to vote first. And, you know, when I look at your record, I was pretty pretty aggravated with you because you did kind of just disappeared and had no regard for, for the rules of supervision and the contract that you signed with us to follow the rules and you didn't do it. Um, but after talking with you, uh, and I said, I do take note that you didn't get in any other trouble during that whole time. So that says a lot. My vote today is going to be do not revoke. We're going to reprimand you on the record and return you to supervision. Thank Good you luck. So. Thank you so. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. But weighing public safety and what's best for your family is difficult at times. Um, I don't think that at this point today that I see that you pose a risk to public safety. I think you make some bad choices. And um, so I'm going to concur with my colleague and do not revoke and return to supervision. Mr. Freeman. Thank you so All much. Right, uh, look, you got it going on. I mean, you got a bunch of kids. You got a lot to do. And, and I know it was tough during COVID, but uh, I, I'm not lying to you. This interview made me not revoke you because I, I do think you got your head on straight and you're heading in the right direction. So don't let us down, okay? I promise you I won't let you down. Thank you all so much. All right. Good luck to you. And thank you, Deputy Ignatius, for uh, accommodating us today. I think that's our only, is it our only one? Yes. Okay. We're going to sign off. It's uh, 1146. All right, thank you. Thank you guys so much.
Well, that's how you do an interview. There's, I mean, I think they were absolutely going to go in and revoke him. He, he absconded, he disappeared. He didn't even do anything like send a simple text message, but he didn't, you know, he, he kind of owned up to it. And I think there's also something just pot. He had like a nice smile and like a positive energy, uh, which, which is, which I think had something to do with it. At least that was my perspective, but, um, you know, he also passed like the, the litmus test when they asked him, okay, well, how old are your kids? And we've seen, we've seen inmates where they struggle with that, but you know, he kicked, he kicked right in. He seemed like he's involved. Um, and I think of course the biggest aspect is that he, he didn't do any criminal activity. So he's been doing well, um, under just not reporting. And even when he got pulled, like what got him locked up is he got pulled over and it doesn't seem that there was, it was anything, you know, that he it wasn't like a DUI when he was pulled over. But ima imagine your wife sends you out to the grocery store or whatever. And boom, next thing you know, you're, you're, you're in jail. And then it's like all this time later and you don't know what's going to happen. And I, I don't have information on what he originally um, did. Um, but what we can go over, you may have seen this already. This is the legislation for parole re revocations in Louisiana. Um, and basically what happens is when, when you're locked up, the, uh, the jail has to inform the parole board within three days that you were locked up and then the parole board can actually um, put in writing to, to, to detain you for longer. And that's what happens in these scenarios. So you might get pulled over. He has a warrant for his arrest because he hasn't reported. Then, um, then they have three days to, to write back, uh, to write to the parole board. The parole board then can say, okay, we're gonna detain you. And they kind of can detain them for very long periods of time that there, that those there's not like we've seen people detained for close to a year before having the revocation hearings. Um, so it's not a pleasant place to be. Now I had always thought that you didn't earn a good time um, when you were locked up, but according to this, you do um, not good time, but time um let's see what it is uh da -da 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 -da. no credit shall be applied toward completing the full parole term for the period of time probably was a fugitive from justice so it, it's something interesting actually um it's like when you're i didn't realize this but when you are um serving your your time on parole it actually you're actually earning my understanding is you're actually earning credit towards your full sentence which i had no idea right so every year that you're out on parole i believe you're earning time against your full sentence that you would otherwise be backing up and but of course but it says here if you're if you're absconded it doesn't earn you that time Um, when the parolee or parolee has been revoked, the committee for a violation and condition of parole, the parolee shall be returned to the physical custody department of public corrections, um, and serve the remainder of his sentence as of the date of his release on parole. So here it's saying, oh, you just, it's your, your clock starts from the day you were released, but then it goes on to say, and for any credit for time served for good behavior while on parole. So you are earning time. You see that the parolee shall be given credit for time served prior to the revocation hearing for the served in actual custody for time served in actual custody while being held for parole violation in a local detention facility, state institution, out of state institution. So the parolee shall be given credit for time served prior to the revocation hearing for time served in actual custody. So here it's saying that you're getting time served prior to the revocation hearing.
But it's not where does it mention what I had just discussed that you get time for your for being out on parole. Okay. This, I, I need to go, thoroughly go through this so I can be of value to you guys. I'm sorry. Um, but thank you for being here. I, I, I like this hearing. I thought it was a feel good hearing. Um, and I think that he, uh, that he, he, he won his freedom with kind of his honesty. Um, and of course, everything had to do with it is that he had no new felonies and he, and he's been doing great out on parole. So anyways, it just uh, goes to show, but with that, I'll let you go.